hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel in this particular video we're going straight to talk about the gross anatomy of the p structure you know the reason why we're calling it the p structure is simply because of the regulations set by youtube there are words you make use of that will restrict videos to a particular age bracket so we call it p structure so that everybody can have access to the video so the P structure is just a male copulatory organ that conveys not only the semen, it also conveys urine through the urethra to the external environment. It is composed of three cylindrical bodies of erectile cavernous tissue. And these three cylindrical bodies are arranged in the following ways. Two corpora cavernosa are located dosally whereas a single corpus spongiosum is located ventrally. The P structure consists of the following parts. It consists of the roots, the body, and the glands. When we say that the P structure is in anatomical position, what we simply mean is that it is standing erect. And when the P structure is not standing erect or when it is flaccid, the dosum of the P structure will be directed anteriorly. Now let's talk about the root of the P structure in details. The root of the P structure consists of the crura, whose singular form is the crux, and the bulb, ischio cavernosus muscle, and bulbus spongiosus muscle. The root of the P structure is located in the superficial perennial pouch which is between the perennial membrane superiorly and the deep perennial fascia inferiorly. As for the cura and the bulb, they contain masses of erectile tissues. Each crux is attached to the inferior part of the internal surface of the corresponding ischia ramus, anterior to the ischia tuberosity, and the body of the P structure is that free pendulous part that is suspended from the pubic symphysis. The skin of the pea structure is thin unlike every other part of the body and it is darkly pigmented. The skin of the pea structure is connected to the tunica arboginea by a loose connective tissue. At the neck of the pea structure, the skin and the feature of the pea structure are prolonged by a double layer of skin which is known as the prepuce. If you don't call it the prepuce, you can call it the foreskin. In an unsecondized man, covers the glands to a very large extent. The frenulum of the prepuce is a median fold that passes from the deep layer of the prepuce to the urethral surface of the glands penis. Now, let's talk about the ligament of the pea structure. The ligament of the pea structure consists of the suspensory ligament and the fundiform ligament. As for the suspensory ligament, it is a condensation of deep fascia that arises from the superficial surface of the pubic symphysis. It then passes inferiorly and splits to form a sling that is attached to the deep fascia of the pea structure at the junction of its root and the body. The fibers of the suspensory ligament are actually short and taut. What they do is that they anchor the erectile bodies of the pea structure to the pubic symphysis. As for the fundiform ligament, it is an irregular mass or condensation of collagen and um, elastic fibers of subcutaneous tissue that descends in the midline of the linear alba superior to the pubic symphysis. The fundiform ligament splits to surround the pea structure and then unites and blends inferiorly with the datus fascia, forming what? The scrotal septum. The pea structure, as we know, is a living part of the body. So it requires blood which carries oxygen, nutrients and several substances that helps to maintain the anatomical structure and physiological functions of the pea structure. So the arteries that supplies the P structure is mainly the branches of the internal pudenda arteries. Though there are some other arteries like the dosal arteries of the P structure which run on each side of the deep dosal vein in the dosal groove between the corpora cavernosa 
then giving blood supply to the fibrous tissue around this corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum, also the spongy urethra and also the penile skin. The deep arteries of the pea structure pierce the cura proximally. It runs distally near the center of the corpora cavernosa, then giving blood supply to the erectile tissue that is in this corpora cavernosa. Arteries of the bulb of the pH structure supply the posterior part of the corpus spongiosum. If you don't call it the posterior part of the corpus spongiosum, you can call it the bulbous part of the corpus spongiosum. So this artery supply also the urethra that is within it as well as the bulbo urethra gland. After the nutrient in oxygenated blood that is taken to the pea structure, this blood needs to be conveyed back to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. So it is through the venous drainage that this blood is being taken up to where it is re-oxygenated. So let's now talk about the venous drainage of the pea structure. Blood that are coming from the cavernous space is drained by venous plexus that joins the deep dosal vein of the pea structure in the deep fascia. Blood that are coming from the superficial covering of the pea structure drain into the superficial dosal vein, which drain into the superficial external pudenda vein. For the lymphatic drainage of the pea structure, the lymph that are from the skin of the pea structure drain initially to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Then, the lymph that are from the glands and the distal spongy urethra drain into the deep inguinal and external iliac node. Then, the lymph from the cavernous bodies and the proximal spongy urethra drains into the internal iliac node. The pea structure is a living part of the body, so it responds to stimulus. So the nerve supply to the pea structure is mainly through the pelvic splanchnic and pudenda nerves. So let's now talk about the clinical importance of the pea structure, the clinical correlates that is associated with the pea structure. The first clinical correlate is the erectile dysfunction. If someone has erectile dysfunction or simply called ED, the person cannot get or keep his pea structure erect for sexual act. There are so many causes of this erectile dysfunction. Some treatments of the erectile dysfunction are oral medication, short and penile implant devices. The next clinical correlate is the priapism. The priapism is a condition that happens when the pea structure stays erect for a longer than four hours. If this happens, the person needs to see a doctor right away. He may experience a long-term erectile dysfunction and lasting damage of the pea structure if priapism isn't quickly tackled. The next clinical implication is phimosis. Phimosis is when the extra skin that covers the head of the pea structure is too tight, which is the foreskin. All right? is too tight when it becomes very tight the foreskin can't be removed out of the way so that the person can be able to see the head of his pea structure and this can cause infection and difficulty in urinating the last but not the least is what we call the pea structure trauma or fracture pea structure has no bones like we saw in the anatomy of the pea structure but part of the lining of the pea structure can get torn when it is erect. When this happens, the person will hear a pumping sound. This sometimes referred to as a nice fracture. The pea structure will become flat and turn black and blue. 
A piece structure fracture is a medical emergency and should be evaluated by urologist. I hope this video goes a very long way in helping us in understanding the anatomy of the piece structure and the clinical implication that is associated with the piece structure. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for your time. Please always do the right thing, stay focused and help your neighbor. God bless you. God got you. Peace.